Hello guys, welcome to Let's Tutor Accountancy. If you are new to our channel, then don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoy our videos, do like and share it with your friends. For more such interesting videos, hit the bell icon to get the latest updates. We also provide various online courses on our website www.letstutor.com at super affordable prices. So do check them out. Finally, we have prepared the financial statements and we have given it to our client, Mr. Daniel. But now, how is he going to read them? What sense does it make from his perspective? He needs to make judgments based on these statements, right? He needs to plan and he needs to take decisions for next year. So today, in this session, we will try to explain certain important factors and elements of the financial statement in a simple language so that it will enable him to read and interpret financial statements in a better manner. So we are going to compare Messer Daniel's financial statements to that of Trader Y, who also operates in the same kind of business as him. So let's take a look at their trading accounts. We can see that Y Traders has higher sales yet they have lower goods that are kept in stock compared to this which means they have rolled out more goods daniel has nearly 30 percent of his purchase goods still in stock so it being the first year of his business it is okay but he can try to roll out more sales in the coming years next we look at gross profit we can see that the gross profit is 634 but the ratio or the percentage of gross profit is 13.93 approximately. This shows an average gross profit made from buying and selling of goods. Over 13% is quite good. For any business having a healthy gross profit margin is crucial. We should compare this with others operating in the same industry or other business entities dealing in the same kind of products as this is a profit from the actual trading activities. Now the GP percentage, the gross profit percentage of Y traders is coming up to 13.04%. So Daniel's gross profit is comparable to theirs and broadly it is fine considering first year of operation. Let's now look at their profit and loss account. The expenses, we can see Daniel Traders needs to pay rent, whereas Y Traders is not paying any rent. So they may be having a place of their own or maybe they are conducting business from home. Then we can see advertisement, Daniel Traders 120. On the other hand, Y Traders are spending more than twice of that, which actually is a smart move. Now, Daniel Traders may have to keep this in mind that he may have to advertise more during the next year. Now, Daniel has some bad debts, so it is an initial phase, it is a learning phase, so it is okay but he has to be more careful about this next time when he's allowing credit terms to his debtors. Of course, it does take time for any business to become stable and to get profits. Daniel Traders made a net loss of 956. What is the cause of this? It is due to the loss by fire which costed him 1000 bucks. This is an unforeseen event. Can we see any insurance payment? No, whereas Y Traders is also paying for insurance. So this is something we can learn. It will be beneficial to have an insurance. Excluding the loss from fire, the statement would in fact show a net profit of 44. If we calculate the net profit percentage for Daniel Traders, it is coming up to 0.97%. But if we are considering only the income from his business and we are excluding all other incomes and this loss by fire, then again it would mean 
actual loss of 1106 this net profit percentage to sales varies from entity to entity depending on the kinds of expenses they have but broadly we can compare and try to analyze how uh, how expenses are being managed let's check the balance sheet now talking about cash management you know this is something very important in any business a lot of your income and expenses depend on how well you manage your cash let's see how much cash Daniel has on hand 4080 which is actually a lot on the other hand we can see he has an overdraft so if he could have paid off uh, the bank overdraft or if he could have invested some amount for a short term he would have also got some income it's not really helping keeping a lot of money in hand trader Y on the other hand has more investments and less debtors means their working capital is a little bit well managed their debtors are also more controlled and by looking at machinery we can say that Daniel has invested more here maybe because he's looking at his future prospects or for the benefit in the long run or perhaps he has invested in a better machine so he should make the most out of it coming to the next question so has he utilized his capital effectively now when we say effectively it is a relative term here Daniel is having net loss in his first year of operation normally he should at least be able to make more profit than what he would get by keeping the capital in a fixed deposit or by investing his capital elsewhere now assuming the prevalent interest rate in the economy is 8 percent then Daniel should at least be making 12 to 14 percent of profit because he is putting in so much of efforts and he's taking risks as a businessman in addition to investing this capital amount so definitely he should aim for higher profits in the coming years overall he did quite good considering it was his first year of operation but there is a lot of scope for improvement and by comparing it to others you you get an idea of where you stand and how you can improve so that is a good thing now we would talk about how would some other parties like creditors banks or government how would they look at our financial statements what would be their perspective now creditors are individuals or agencies that have extended credit facilities to Messrs Daniels his creditor dues are 3300 in total which is not alarmingly high creditors are primarily concerned whether Daniel traders will pay them on time and they will also see if it is a profit making company do they maintain reasonable cash balance that way the creditors would feel that their amount due is safe with the firm now what about banks banks may give us financial assistance in future in that case they will see if the company is able to pay them interest in time and pay back the loans as per agreed terms they will probably check on the consistency of the progress made and the profits made they will also look at the assets in the business which can be pledged as security and they will look at the capital deployed or arranged by the owner that would be their main concern what about government what are they mainly interested in interested in the earnings they will check if taxes are paid whether the company abides by all the laws and the rules so I've just tried to sum all the basic information I could get by reading this statements. Our client is very happy with our services. With this, we have completed our process of accounting cycle. For accounting cycle, we have a total of 30 plus sessions, which on an average is more than 300 minutes. It covers all the concepts and steps 
from very basic accounting principles till preparing financial statements. We've tried to cover all the basic concepts with logical thoughts. We hope there's no need to mug up anything and that you have understood this better and you have enjoyed this journey along with us. If you are thorough with these basics, you should be able to understand and learn accounting of all the business entities, be it joint stock company or partnership accounts. It will be simple. We hope you like this session and it helps strengthen your basic. If you still have any doubt, feel free to ask in the comment section. We are always there to help you. Also get the privilege to become our Prime member and get access to many more benefits by just clicking the join button. For more such videos, do subscribe to our channel Let's Tutor Accountancy and hit the bell icon to get the notification of our latest updates. See you soon in our next session. Until then, keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.